Welcome to another episode of Paragon's Favorite Stuff, where we show you all of the things that we love to have aboard our 42-foot sailboat named Paragon. In today's episode, I'm going to unbox and install our brand new portable 12-volt fridge and freezer. It's called the Bodega Cooler. <laughs> The Bodega Cooler is a portable 12 volt fridge and freezer that has a compressor built right into the unit itself. It's designed to be used in a car or a van or at a campsite running off of a portable power station battery. Before we take a look at it, first I just want to explain how we got here. For the past 15 years, we have always used a marine refrigeration product called the Cool Blue, made by Technotix. It has always worked really well for us. It gave us a massive amount of refrigerated space right here, and really just a ridiculous amount of frozen good space in here. That is, until about three months ago when I just wasn't paying attention and I accidentally broke it. The Cool Blue has a big holding plate in the freezer side and it has these refrigerant lines that are going to it. The holding plate had built up a lot of ice and instead of defrosting it, I was chipping it away with this big screwdriver. I nicked one of the refrigerant tubes with the screwdriver and all the refrigerant leaked out. You'd think that after 15 years I wouldn't have made that mistake, but I did. At the time, we were just about to push off for the Faroe Islands to spend two months sailing there, and we just didn't have enough time to find a refrigeration technician to come and repair our refrigeration. So instead, we pushed off without it. For the past two and a half months, we haven't had any refrigeration. At first, we thought that not having our gigantic refrigerator and freezer space was going to be awful, but then we discovered that it actually wasn't that bad. If you watched our canning video, then you know that we have over 175 pint-sized glass mason jars of home canned meats that don't require any refrigeration. I think each one of those pint-sized jars has enough meat to make a nice meal for two or maybe four people. Throughout our time in Faro, every night or every other night, we just open up another jar of meat for dinner and we found that we had no problems buying fresh fruits and vegetables once or maybe twice a week. For the most part, they stayed fresh for as long as we needed them to until we ate them. We found that this worked fine for us. After a while, we started to wonder if we really even needed such a massive refrigerator and freezer. We realized that we only really missed having a very small amount of refrigerated space for things like milk and leftovers and ice cubes. Then a wonderful thing happened. We met a young couple that was traveling around Faro in their van. They gave us a tour of the van and the one thing that really stuck with us was how much they loved their portable cooler fridge. It was super compact and they said it worked really well for them. And that got us thinking, could we use something like that on Paragon? So I did a bit of research and I found this 36 liter Bodega cooler. We like this particular model because it has separate refrigerator and freezer compartments. Those two smaller compartments can also be combined into one larger compartment by removing this divider wall between them. Then that larger compartment can work as either a fridge or a freezer. We also wanted the Bodega Cooler because its physical dimensions will fit perfectly right here in the space that we have for it in the passageway going to the aft cabin. So I contacted Bodega and in full disclosure, they sent this product to us for free so that we could show it to you. And that was really cool because we were just about to purchase one. I present to you the Bodega Cooler. You can see on the left side we have this refrigerated space and on the right side we have a freezer space. The temperature in each of these compartments can be set individually by using this control panel or by using an app on your phone. 
Each side has a removable basket so you can easily remove everything from the compartments and clean it. There's also a drain plug in the bottom of the refrigerated section so you can drain it. And if you remove the divider in between the two compartments, then you can use the whole space as either a fridge or a freezer. In this box, you've got a power supply and two power cords, a 12 volt cord and an AC cord. And you've got the user manual. You plug the power supply into the Bodega cooler and then you plug in either of the two power cords, one for 12 volts if you're in your car or you've got a car outlet in your boat. And the other one has a household AC plug. You can get this with a UK plug or a US plug because it runs on both 110 and 220. It can also run on either 12 volts or 24 volts. The cooler has flip up handles so you can easily pick it up. And it also has wheels on the bottom so you can extend this handle and then drag it. We'll go over the rest of the features after we get it installed in the passageway. We've always had this wood here to keep stuff in that space and I'm going to continue to use it to keep the cooler in place but first I have to take it down so that we can install it. Okay, this is it. Moment of truth. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, that works. We can still, yes, we can still open that up to get access to our little containers back there. We're going to have frozen stuff in here and refrigerated stuff in here. Small amount of space, easy to access. I'm going to add additional insulation around the box to make it more efficient. There's also a vent here and here and in the back. So I'm gonna have to make holes in the wood that holds it in here uh, for the airflow. And we'll hook it up to the power and see how it works. Good morning. It's the next day. Yesterday we were just so excited to have refrigeration again that we just plugged it into the AC outlet and ran to the grocery store and got some ice cream. Check it out. We got some ham and some milk. It's super cold. Uh, we got some frozen peas and ice cubes and ice cream. The cooler has been running for 15 hours and the ice cream has been in there for 14 hours. And there it is, ice cream aboard Paragon. Since we haven't had any refrigeration aboard Paragon for two and a half months, this is a pretty special occasion. So here's to ice cream for breakfast. Mm. It's harder to see right now in the daytime, but there's a little light right here that's built into the cooler that automatically turns on when you open the lid. And I found that light actually pretty useful in the middle of the night when I wanted to check on the contents. Here's the control panel. It's got a power button right here. If you press and hold on the power button, you turn the whole thing off. You'll hear the compressor kick off there. And if you just touch it, then you turn it back on and the compressor will start back up. Pressing this button toggles between an energy saving eco mode or a faster cooling max mode, which draws more power. You can see if it's in eco mode or max mode by looking right here. You can see here it says max, but if I touch the cog wheel, it'll switch to eco mode and will take longer to cool things, but will use less power. Uh, last night we just had it set in the max mode. Also, if you hold this cogwheel button down for three seconds, then you can toggle between high, medium, and low battery protection modes, and that's displayed right here. Just hold it down to get into the mode, and then you press it, and it says L for low, or 
M for medium or H for high. These modes let you set the minimum voltage required for the compressor to run as shown in this chart. The manual recommends that you set it to high if you're running the cooler on a car battery or to medium or low if you're running on a portable power station battery. The upper screen displays the current temperature in the fridge section and the lower display shows the current temperature in the freezer section. If you press the plus or minus button under each screen, then it lets you set the desired temperature for that compartment. And then it goes back to showing you the current temperature. Right here, it shows voltage. Since we're running it on shore power right now, it's showing full voltage, but this will be more relevant to see when we switch it to running off of our ship's batteries. If the temperature in each of the compartments is colder than what you set the desired temperature to, then the compressor doesn't run. But if the temperature in either compartment gets warmer than the set temperature, then the compressor kicks on like it's doing right now. Last night, I turned the fridge temperature to three degrees, as you can see right there, three degrees and I set the freezer temperature to negative 18 degrees. After you make the setting, then it reverts back to showing you the current temperature. We've been opening the lid to get at the ice cream, and so the temperatures come up a little bit, but eventually the temperature of the freezer will get down to what I set it to, and then the compressor will turn off. Finally, there's a USB port right here so you can power or charge USB powered devices through the cooler itself. When the compressor is running, you can hear it. The manual says it's rated for up to 42 decibels, so it is audible, but it's not that noticeable. I don't think it's loud enough to bother us. After we ran the cooler all night long, in the morning, I did find that a small amount of condensation had built up on the front and on the back side of the cooler. And I think that's probably fine if you're using this at the beach or at a campsite running off of a portable power station battery or if you've got it in the back of your car and are using it on a road trip. And I think that's actually what this product was primarily designed for. But for a more permanent insulation on our sailboat, I'm hoping to get a little bit better efficiency by adding insulation to the outside of the entire box. With where we're installing this, I unfortunately won't have the clearance to be able to open up the lid enough to take those baskets out. So I'm just gonna have to take the baskets out and not use them. And I think that's fine. When we have to clean the compartments, we'll just take everything out and clean it. I think that'll be fine. Take out the fridge, take out the freezer, put everything back in there. Next, to make it easier to put the insulation all around the cooler, I'm actually going to remove these handles and the wheels to make more space for the insulation. up a lot of space for more insulation on the sides and on the bottom corner there. Good. See how the wood that I had here previously fits around it. I think it should fit good. I've got the cooler placed where I think it should be. I'm going to screw in some wood around it to hold it in place. I will cut out a hole here for ventilation and also in the back here. And then I will put in insulation all around the entire cooler. You can see here the space that we have available for insulation to go. So a good 32 millimeters of space all around the entire thing for more insulation. And I think that'll help. Just marking here where I'm going to make my cutout for the ventilation hole. So now we've got a ventilation hole there and another one there. So it'll get 
adequate airflow. I just screwed in these pieces of wood in the countertop on all four sides of the cooler to prevent it from moving while we put the insulation around it. Yeah. Why don't we go tomorrow? Yeah. Yep. I just gotta get this thing then. I have spent all day attaching Armaflex insulation to the outside of the cooler and can still open it up just fine. Insulation's quite thick. Now we will secure the whole thing in place with the wood frame. Here's our final installation of the Bodega T36 cooler aboard Paragon. We've been using it full time for the past month and a half, and I am thrilled to say that it has been working really great for us. You can see that I put the box frame back in place, and I also enlarged the ventilation openings here and here and also back here. The Armaflex insulation that I added throughout the cooler has completely stopped any condensation from forming on the outside of the box. Now we're going to spend the next five months sailing over 2,500 nautical miles from Scotland to Ireland to Portugal and then finally to Morocco where we're planning to settle down for the winter in a marina. We'll be using the Bodega T36 for all of our refrigeration throughout this voyage. After we get to Morocco, we're going to do an extensive in-depth review of the Bodega T36, but for now, here are some of our initial impressions. First, as I said before, for the type of cruising that Monique and I are doing, I really don't think we need a massive refrigerator and a massive freezer. If we had additional crew and if we were sailing to very remote places like Svalbard or Greenland where there are very few places where you can buy groceries, then maybe we'd need a little bit more refrigeration and freezing space. But for just me and Mo, sailing from Scotland to Morocco, where there are going to be grocery stores everywhere we stop, I think the amount of space that this cooler has is more than adequate. We've been using the freezer side to store a good amount of frozen meats, frozen vegetables, ice cubes, and ice cream. And we've been using the refrigerated section for milk, chilled drinks, cold cuts, and leftovers. I think the amount of electricity that this cooler requires is more than reasonable. It draws between two and a half and three amps on the eco mode and between three and a half and four amps on the max mode. It's important to understand that it's actually only drawing those amps when the compressor is running. The compressor only runs when the temperature in the cooler has risen above what you have it set for. How often the compressor runs depends on what temperature settings you've made and also what you've got in the cooler. If the freezer is full and everything in it is completely frozen, then the compressor doesn't have to work as hard to keep it frozen. Then it runs less frequently, only turning on every once in a while to maintain the temperature. But if the freezer is completely empty and you fill it to the top with unfrozen meats and then turn the temperature down to negative 20 degrees Celsius, then the compressor can run nonstop for about the next day to freeze everything in the compartment. It does have the ability to get so cold that any meats you put in there will become completely frozen solid. And even ice cream will stay frozen hard. During the day when we're getting a lot of amps coming in from our solar panels, I can turn the freezer temperature all the way down to negative 20 and we're still positive on amps. But at night when we're not getting any amps in from solar, it's really easy to just raise the temperature of the freezer so that it'll barely run all night long. In the morning when the solar panels are generating electricity again, it's easy to just bring the temperature back down so the compressor runs again. When we open it up in the morning after it hasn't been running hard all night, everything in there is still frozen. Another thing that I should mention is the price. This cooler costs $379, which I think is a great value for what you're getting. The prices of other refrigeration systems, especially ones that are specifically made for boats, can easily get into many, many thousands of dollars. 
So I think the Bodega T36 is a really affordable option and I think it's been working really great for us. Stay tuned for when we publish an extensive review of this cooler after we get to Morocco in about six months. I'd like to say thank you to Bodega for sending this unit to us for review. If you'd like to find out more about the Bodega T36, then check out the link we put in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to give us a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video.